everyone! Welcome to X Fundy Diaries. My name is Ellie, my pronouns are she, her, and today I want to talk about hearing from God. When I was a Christian, I believed that the Holy Spirit was speaking directly to me on a regular basis, and I'd like to share with you what that felt like at the time and what my thoughts are now looking back. There are many different ways to be a Christian, even within the fundamentalist world. One of the only things that unites fundies is their insistence that they each have the exact right truth. My family was always charismatic adjacent, meaning that we never actually attended a very charismatic church, but we had a lot of the same beliefs. So for instance, we believed very strongly in spiritual warfare and that signs and wonders are for the current day, that God could heal sickness and disease, that my dad had the gift of prophecy and could speak in tongues, and that the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life showed that they were truly on fire for the Lord. Christians who didn't believe in communing with the Holy Spirit were considered spiritually dead or dry bones. Very judgy, I know, but we were fundies and being judgmental was unfortunately a big part of our lifestyle. There are two ways that we believed that the Holy Spirit spoke to us. The first is through the written word, the Bible, and the Greek word for that is logos. And the second was through the spoken word of God, when the Holy Spirit would speak directly to an individual's heart about their own life. And the Greek word for that was rhema. These are beliefs that I was indoctrinated into from birth, but the older that I got, the more and more I believed these things truly for myself. When I was a young teenager, I believed that Jesus spoke to me through scripture. I was taught that the Bible was God's love letter to his children, so I would read it every day, and when a verse or a phrase jumped out at me on the page and my heart would beat a little faster, I believed that that was the Holy Spirit illuminating a part of scripture and applying it directly to my life. These moments were so exciting that I wanted to document them. So in the margins of my Bible, next to whatever verse or passage I felt like the Holy Spirit was illuminating, I would write the date and a little note about what I felt like he was saying to me. When I was 16, I was allowed to start reading Francine Rivers books. Francine Rivers is a Christian romance author, and this is her most popular book, Redeeming Love. And this book and all of her books are actually extremely fucked up and damaging. But one of the things that I was most drawn to in her writing is how the characters would have an ongoing conversation with Jesus in their spirits. In the book's formatting, God's words were bold and italicized and he would always call the characters beloved, which at the time I thought was really beautiful. The way these characters spoke to God and heard from him instantly felt so natural and effortless, and I wanted it so badly. So I decided to try it, and it seemed to work. I prayed, I listened, and I was able to get a response in my head that I believed was the voice of Jesus. It wasn't exactly an audible voice, but it was very clear in my mind. It had words that I could see in my brain and just the faintest echo of sound. I felt like I was finally able to understand what the still small voice from First Kings sounded like. Sometimes I would feel like I could hear from God every day and I would feel his presence, which was like, a joy bubbling up inside me and a peace washing over me. I felt this presence most strongly when I was in nature and when I was listening to or dancing to worship music. And those are the times that I felt the closest and the most connected to Jesus. Other times I couldn't hear or feel anything from him, whether it was a day or two or sometimes even weeks at a time. And the times that I couldn't hear from him were terrifying. I would feel a physical pain and an overwhelming sense of guilt. I thought there must be some hidden sin in my life or I just wasn't trying hard enough. So hearing God's voice became almost like an obsession to me 
because it felt like confirmation that me and God were okay, that I was fully devoted to him, that I was walking with him, and that he was pleased with me. I often recorded these conversations with God in my diaries so that when I was having times of doubt, I could look back on them as a record and as proof of my connection to him. And like Francine Rivers would put her version of God's voice in bold and italics, I would put what I felt like was God's voice in quotation marks in my journal. I have so many examples that I could show you, but I've chosen just a few to hopefully give you a glimpse into my frenzied and jumbled inner world. So this first one was from the year that I spent at a Christian university. April 7th, 2012. I see more and more of God's fingerprints on my life as I learn to seek, listen to, and trust him more. He even cares about the little things in my day. This morning, I asked him if I should do my hair, and he said yes. Then I asked him if I should do my devotional with him after, and he said yes. I didn't think I would have time for both, but he said I would. Sure enough, the time of my meeting got pushed back a whole hour. If I hadn't trusted his answers, I would have just gone right to the devotional and my hair would have been a wreck for my meeting. My Heavenly Father even cares about my hair. I am overwhelmed. He is so good to me. Part of the group project was filming a video, so I felt like it was extra special that he told me I'd have enough time to do my hair and also do my devotional, which would help me not feel guilty for the next couple of hours. Speaking of devotionals, that's what this next one is about. May 20th, 2012. Father, yesterday was awful. I felt like I had such a spirit of complaint all day long. I didn't get to spend time with you in the morning, and the whole day went downhill from there. I hate it when I'm anything other than thankful. I want to praise your name and be so aware of your blessings all day long. Thank you for waking me up early this morning to spend time with you. I only got four hours of sleep, but you are my rest when I am weary. Oh God, four hours is not nearly enough sleep. This is going to be a good day, Father, for I am not going to let the enemy rule my thoughts today. I will take every thought captive in obedience to you. Give me the strength to do that, Lord. I want to please you. Father, what would you have for me today? Okay, so here's God's voice in quotes. Peace in my presence. And then I wrote, how, Father? What do you want me to do? Abide in me. Will you give me the strength to do that, Lord? Yes, trust me. I will, Father. I will trust in you to help me to abide in you. And I will have peace in your presence today. Reading this in this moment, it kind of makes me feel really anxious because I remember what it was like to try to figure out what the hell God was actually saying and what it all meant. So I wrote down the definition of abide, accept or act in accordance with, stay, stand, endure, reside, dwell, remain, bear. And then I wrote, Father, help me to take up my residence in you. And then I wrote a verse. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read the rest of it. <laughs> I used to write long, long passages of scripture in my journals. But that is an example of what a lot of my devotional times looked like. I would start them by journaling a prayer and then I would listen for the voice of God. And whatever I felt like God told me in that moment, I would then try to go find scripture to learn more about what he might be saying to me. And I felt like I always had to obey whatever I felt like God was telling me in my spirit. And sometimes I didn't. And that would make me feel racked with guilt. So a little context for this next example. I planned my wedding in two and a half months, which was extremely stressful. I do not recommend it to anyone. This entry is 10 days before my wedding date, and I was on vacation with my family in Canada, and I did not want to go on this trip at all, but I felt like God had told me 
that I needed to do it to give a gift to my dad. There's a verse, I can't remember exactly what it is, something like giving a gift soothes anger. And I felt like God gave me that verse in the middle of a worship service that I needed to go on this vacation to soothe my dad's anger that I was getting married and just that he was pretty angry with me in general. So there I was on this vacation, writing my vows, ordering things and planning details for the actual event from a completely different country. And instead of my dad being grateful that I came on this vacation for him, he and my mom pressured me to extend our stay. And by that point, I was totally fed up. August 15th, 2012. We missed our flight last night. It was my fault, actually. Yesterday morning, mom and dad begged me to stay one more day on vacation. I didn't want to, I didn't think I could, and I felt so pressured by them. But I prayed about it and asked God if he wanted me to stay. When he said yes, I was shocked. What? My heart cried. Why? Trust me, my child, was his answer. I brushed him off. He couldn't possibly mean that, I thought. I must have heard wrong. Craftily, I convinced myself that it wasn't his voice. What a disobedient fool I was. He wasn't trying to make me do something I didn't want to do. He was trying to protect me and my family from a night of travel misery. As soon as I realized what I had done, grief and regret flooded over me. I asked him if I should confess to mom and dad, and he said no, his forgiveness is enough. So I obeyed this time. As painful a lesson as it was for me to learn, it was such an important one. I know God allowed me to make the wrong decision to show me the consequences of going my own way. Freedom comes in the center of God's will, and obedience to him brings life and peace and blessings. This was my life, and it was exhausting, but I believed that it was the only right way to live. So what do I think about this now? You may be wondering, do I really believe that a supernatural being was speaking to me? And the short answer is no, I don't believe in God anymore. At the same time, I think that it was real and true to me at the time. But honestly, looking back now, I care less about whether that was a real voice or not, and more about my relationship to that voice and how it gave me an extremely warped view of love and of my worth as a human being. It makes me so sad to think about how I was always chasing this elusive divine approval. And the times that I did feel like he spoke to me, he didn't even say much. It was mostly just trite religious phrases that I was already hearing in the Bible, in the worship songs that I listened to, and in the things that all the Christians around me were already saying. And yet, I was so grateful anytime I felt even the tiniest glimmer of God shining down on me. There's a song from one of my favorite TV shows, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, called Love Kernels. The main character, Rebecca, is pining over her friend Josh. And even though he doesn't reciprocate her romantic feelings, she takes basically anything he says and interprets it as love. The lyrics say, Every little crumb is like a tasty clue. If you read between the lines, he's saying, I love you. And that's a humorous but very accurate way to describe the way I feel about God looking back. My personal relationship with Jesus was like a puzzle I was always trying to fit together and like a code I was trying to decipher. It was me making something out of nothing because I was so desperate for the love and acceptance of God. Thank you for listening to my experiences. I hope that this was helpful or validating for someone. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.